have the testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. Uh, Quick Hits comes at you twice. I mean, 3 uh, Boxing comes at you twice a day uh, with Quick Hits. Uh, eight to ten minutes a day, uh, twice a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. I got a fun show for you today. We're going to get into Chris Algieri's return and uh, why I think he's probably in line for a world title fight. Uh, he's getting up there in years. Uh, he's a former 140-pound world champion. I uh, got a very um, beneficial call in a, in a, in a fight with Provodnikov, uh, with, with Ruslan Provodnikov at the Barclays Center. This was back in 2014. This is six years, seven years ago already. That's crazy. Um, before we get into that, please like and subscribe. Uh, share on all forms of social media. Hit the thumbs up. Uh, hit the bell. Share it. Subscribe. All the good stuff. Comment below. Also, our second channel, Texas Boxing Scene. Uh, please uh, subscribe to that channel as well. All uh, proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. So please subscribe to uh, Texas Boxing Scene on um, on YouTube. Um, it's completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. Again, it goes to a good cause. That's near and dear to our heart, Autism Research and Recovery. Um, all right, let's get into today's show. I thought Algeria looks sensational. Um, it's been... He was off two years, uh, you know, two years and two months. The last time he fought was back June 1st um, against uh, Mikel Lespierre, a uh, slick mitt. I'm sorry. The last time he fought was Tommy Coyle. Uh, but I thought, again, he looked really good. Um, and he stopped Tommy Coyle with a body shot, I believe, um, and got rid of him. Um, I thought he looked good now. I thought Coyle had a, had a chance to win that fight. Um, and he came back. It's been two years, um, and he fought Lespierre. Um, and he looked really good. Dominated one basically every round, and, and look, Les Pierre is a guy that is. He's lost three times. He's lost to Pedraza. He's lost to Hooker, and he's lost to Algieri, and he's basically lost every single round in those three fights. Um, I'm not saying that Les Pierre is a bad fighter. What I'm saying is that the guys who have beaten him are, are world champions: Pedraza, Hooker, and Algieri. Um, Pedraza just took him apart last year. Um, and, and then year before that, 2019, Hooker took him apart. And now Algeria took him apart. Um, so it tells me Algeria is still on a world championship level. He hasn't taken a step back. He hasn't struggled. He hasn't looked bad. I, I think he's still on a world championship level. I think Algeria, his, his performance was, for what Algeria is, I, I think it was an excellent performance. Um, he mixed up head, body, his speed still looks good. His angles and his footwork are really good. He's got really good feet. Um, he was scoring. He was acting. Again, Les Pierre is not the best fighter in the world, but let's be honest, he's not the worst fighter in the world either. Um, he, he worked him. He's got to win over Noel Murphy. That, that's his kind of claim to fame when they were both undefeated. Um, and that's really what he has, and then he has losses. Um, But Les Pierre is not the worst fighter in the world. He keeps getting these fights for a reason because he's not bad. Um, he just he isn't up to the challenge when it's these world championship caliber fighters. But I, I thought he looked good. I, I thought Algeria looked sharp. Um, I thought he moved well. Really good combinations. Um, and, and the 140-pound division, uh, you know, it's got one champion. And then it, it's kind of a mystery. Um, I where are we going to go with this division, right? Uh, obviously, we got Taylor at the top. I, I don't think Tank is going to stay at that division, although there's all types of weird rumors with him. Um, Progre, Zapata, Ramirez, Pedraza, Postal. Uh, we go through. Got, it's Progre going to stay at division. Um, you have Zapata, who's for real. You have Branchek. You have Jose Carlos Ramirez. Who I think is a long stay there. I, I kind of like that, but how about Ramirez versus Algeri? Um, we know that Algeri is promoted by Joe DeGuardia and Star Boxing. They have a very good relationship with um, Top Rank. Um, so to me, that tells me Zapata, Ramirez, um, 
Zepeda and Ramirez are available. I saw Pedraza. Um, the rest of that division, you got Mario Barrios. He's probably going to 147. Um, if Taylor vacates his division in the next year, if he leaves and goes up to 147, he's going to vacate all four belts. And all four belts are going to become available. Um, I, I think Al- Algeria would be in a mix to at least fight for one. You know, again, you have guys like Barbosa. I think that's an interesting fight. That's kind of what I like to see. You want to test Barbosa? Put Barbosa in the ring with Chris Algieri. Let's see if he can pass that test. I, I don't know if he can. Uh, you know, Barbosa has a win over Sacedo. I mean, that's really kind of his big step up fight. He's also got an aged Mike Alvarado, but really Sacedo is his best win. Um, Sacedo fought for a world title. Uh, now he's fighting Antonio Moran. Moran uh, Next week, I don't think that's much of a challenge. Um, I, I like City can pass that, which he will. It lines up time-wise. I'd like to see him fight um, Barbosa. Um, if he can win that, which I think he can, you know, I, I think he's all the way back and should be fighting for a world title, whether if that's against Josh Taylor or if Josh Taylor does decide to defend his belt once and leave the division for a vacant title. But I, I think Algeria should be in that conversation. He's done it before. He has. He doesn't look faded. He had a fight uh, before. The uh, uh, before the pandemic, um, against Danny Rodriguez from Queens at the Garden, um, it was before the Coil fight. Um, I'm trying to remember what card it was on. It was Triple G card, I think, or something like that. Uh, maybe it was uh, no, no, it was uh, Andre. It was a Demetrius Andre card, and Algeria fought on the other card, and he looked, he got the benefit of a very close decision. We'll, we'll say that. I, I thought. It was probably 5-5. Five, five. I thought he won the first five, lost the last five. It was that kind of fight. Um, but since then, he's looked better. He fought, you know, not too foot long at that, and then the layoff, and now he, he looks good. Obviously, he's in incredible condition. He, he takes care of himself well. Um, I'd I like to see how Jerry come back. I'd like to see if I'm both of I just came up with that off the top of my head. Uh, but, but let me know what you guys think. You, were you guys impressed with Al Jerry? Uh, would you like to see him again? Um do you think he, he has put himself back into a position where you say, okay, he can fight for a world title? Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, quick Hits comes at you twice a day, every day, 8, 10 minutes a day to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Um, please subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. Um, well, it's all things Texas Boxing, completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. Um all proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. Uh, it is August 4th, 2021. Um, Ivan Calderon is still in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Let's make that change. Let's get the Iron Boy in uh, from Texas to the world. Thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.